Hi, Mrs. Dion. Today we'll be discussing uh, evolution and the evidence that we have for evolution. Uh, evolution means a change over time. So evolution means how species have changed over a very long period of time, thousands and thousands of years. Uh, Charles Darwin was the first person to offer a theory of evolution and how it actually could have occurred over time. He spent a lot of time traveling around the world. He made a famous journey to the Galapagos Islands where he studied uh, very unique life forms, did a lot of research, and came up with his very famous theory of natural selection. These are some of the species he studied, and really he thought about why they were the way they were, uh, why they were adapted to eat a certain type of food or live in a certain type of environment. So his observations led to his theory of natural selection, which really means that the living things that naturally are born with the best traits will be able to survive, and if they survive, they will most likely pass those traits on to the next generation so that the best traits keep getting passed on. And also those who don't have the best traits normally will not survive, so they do not pass those traits on. Um, this is just a cartoon to illustrate uh, natural selection. Just because with the beaver, it might be helpful for the beaver to have a chainsaw for its hand, that's not how natural selection happens. Not just because it would need that, it doesn't just all of a sudden wake up one morning and have that trait. That's not how natural selection works. It works on the traits the organism already is born with. So we need to talk about evidence for evolution because evolution takes thousands and thousands of years. We really don't have a lot of evidence we can visualize for it occurring. Uh, the one piece of direct evidence that we do have where we can actually see a species changing is with bacteria. Uh, bacteria reproduce so quickly that we can actually observe them becoming immune to things like antibiotics because their genetics are changing and they are evolving to have that immunity. Uh, we can also see this in some insects too where they become immune to pesticides over a short period of time. And that is a form of evolution because their DNA has changed over a time. Most of the evidence that we have is actually called indirect evidence where we don't actually see a species evolving but we have evidence that it is occurring or has occurred. So one thing is adaptations. Uh, we can look at organisms and see that they are adapted to live in a certain way. Uh, we'll have mimicry could be an example where one species will look like another species because it's an advantage to look like another species. This is a form of mimicry where you have these snakes um, having a certain color formation means in nature that it's poisonous, having the red against the black. Um, and some snakes will mimic this color pattern because to look like that is an advantage and that other organisms will leave them alone, even though that snake may not really be poisonous. Camouflage also is an adaptation where an organism blends in. Uh, with like the walking stick. It's an advantage to look like this because it will not get eaten, so it will survive and pass that trait on. So having these adaptations gives us evidence that these species evolved over time to have that adaptation so that it could survive. Fossils are another form of indirect evidence. When we find fossils of things that no longer live on our planet, it, we have to question where did those come from? So it tells us that we've had species on our planet that are no longer here. So that Earth has changed and the species that live on Earth have also changed over time. And so we have really evidence right there that things have changed over a period of time. The other piece of evidence is, um, we call it anatomy, but there's really a couple of things here. Uh, one is vestigial structures, which are things like an appendix, that we as humans may have, but it's really no longer a useful organ. So we have to wonder um, why we have that, and maybe we've evolved and changed over time so that it's really no longer useful. Homologous structures are structures that will be similar in certain species. So here's an example of a vestigial structure. This is a pelvic bone in a whale, which we have to wonder why a whale would have a pelvic bone. And homologous structures you have an, a human arm, a dog foreleg, and a seal flipper. They're all very similar in how they're put together, but their functions are very different. So we say that 
these may have come from a common ancestor long ago. Embryology is another piece of evidence for evolution. And what this means is that if we look at the different developing embryos at the beginning of when they're first formed, they look very similar. And as you go along down the line, they become much uh, different. But when we start out, we all kind of have a similar look to us. So that would say that we've kind of started in the same place. And then biochemistry is our last and probably the most significant piece of evidence that scientists use. This is where they will actually take DNA in different organisms and compare the DNA. And the more similar the organism is, the more alike and more closely related those organisms are on the evolutionary tree. And so this is actually very concrete evidence. Um, they've looked at humans and chimpanzees and were 99% identical. So it tells us that we are closely related to that species. So this is very, there's a lot of research being done in this area of comparing DNA and also comparing a substance called cytochrome C, which is very similar to comparing the DNA. Uh, this is just showing the evolutionary tree. Uh, the numbers are going to say how many differences there are in the different forms of DNA. So we're going to be more closely related to the organisms up on that side of the evolutionary tree than the ones over here. And that concludes our evidence for evolution.